stories as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostest. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sporty spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghost as... Topper. I have the payroll of the Hercules Corporation. I'm just going to take the fellow's car money now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I see you wherever you are. Come on, materialize. Come on, Topper. Let's go out to the track this afternoon and make ourselves a lot of money. Yes, Poppy, it's a glorious day for the races. Now, look, we're not going to any races. And put that money right back on my desk. Oh, George. Marion. There's a thousand dollars missing. Search me. Marion? I warn you, Toppy, I'm ticklish. <laughs> what are these? Oh, uh, uh, we bought you a couple of tickets on the Irish sweepstakes. I don't gamble. You should have saved your money. Uh, Topper, about the Hercules payroll. Uh, uh, I'm just going over it. Uh, what's this? Uh, Racing form? Uh, yes, I, uh, I race down to the office every morning. It keeps me in good form. But think how this might look to a customer. Uh, an office of the bank playing the races. But, Mr. Scarlett, I'm not accusing you. You're a very reliable executive. Oh, well, thank and you. And I trust you implicitly. I appreciate that. Uh, excuse me. But, but uh, Mr. Scarlett. Mr. Scarlett. I... I'll uh, take care of the Hercules payroll. But, Mr. Schuyler, I assure you, I, I haven't the slightest interest in racing. Well, if we can't go to the track, we may as well listen to the race. They're off and running. Lucy Bell steps into the lead. Then it's Muddy Shoes and Orphan Pivot. <laughs> For her, Muddy Shoes and Trot by one length. Lucy Bell is second ahead. Orphan Pivot is third on the outside. A chopper. He does. He goes, Oliver. I've got a bet. Passing the half-mile post, it is... Topper. How do you do that? I mean, keep it up in the air like that. Oh, oh nothing to it. It's a hi-fi radio. <laughs> I'll see you out for lunch, Mr. Scott. Yeah. Three journal. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Topper, could I interest you in a ticket on a turkey raffle? Oh, no, thank you, Harlan. I'm opposed to gambling in any form. Okay. Besides, I prefer salami. Is that, George? A turkey raffle. Yeah. I'm going to get one for Topper. I'm tired of salami. Put this in his pocket. Get one for Henrietta, too. Okay, and one for Katie. Mr. Topper, I thought you didn't want a ticket. I don't. No gambling. Banker has to be careful of appearances. Good afternoon, Mr. Scott. Oh, uh, Topper, about this long turkey raffle. I beg your pardon? This morning it was the races. This afternoon you come marching through the bank disguised as a turkey raffle. When will all this end? Well, if I win, I'd be happy to give you the bird. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm not going to stand for any more of this, Topper. You think I'm crazy? Topper, are you going to let him speak to you like that? Yes. I, I mean, no. Well, one of us is. I don't know which. Oh, punch him in the nose. 
You need a straitjacket, you imbecile. Topper, you're holding me. I don't want to push you around. Stop talking and go into my office before you start any more trouble. Go to your office. <laughs> we'll go into my office. I'll show you how much trouble I can make. <laughs> there, did that Skylar give him a working over? And Topper never even made a peep. Hey, George, you know what Topper needs? Yeah, money. He needs courage. Well, it's the same thing. Huh? If you have money, you have courage. Say, if, if Topper thought he had money, he'd have courage enough to make Skylar apologize to him. Huh? Let's call him up and tell him he won the Irish Tree Stakes. Good idea. Hello? Yes, Cousin Topper speaking. Hello? This is a transatlantic operator calling. Just a moment, please. A London calling. London? Uh, hello, hello there, old boy. I uh, thought you might be interested to know that you've won the, uh... The grand prize of the, uh... The Irish sweepstakes. Sure and big guy, you've won yourself the Irish sweepstakes. You've got and won yourself 800,000 spalpeens. I mean, dollars. Eight hundred thousand. Wait a minute. Which ticket won? Which ticket won? What was the number? Wait a minute. Here he is. Oh, here, here we are. The number is... Seven three eight five eight three eight five six seven four nine. I'm going to get it back to him. Uh, I don't think I have that one. Uh, will you repeat the number? I see. Can't you remember a simple number? <laughs> ah, I've got it. I've got it. Seven three eight five eight three eight five six seven four nine. What have you got, Toppy? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Marion, I just won the Irish sweepstakes. Really, Toppy? How much did you win? $800,000. Well, now you're going in there and make Mr. Skyler apologize to you, aren't you? I most certainly am not. You are? I'm going to make him come to me. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yes, Hopper? Skyler, I want to see you in my office immediately. Why, Harry? <laughs> Topper, come in, Skylar. The name is Mr. Skylar. It's time we had a meeting of the minds. Impossible. There's only one mind between us, and I have it. That's precisely the type of insult I don't dare to take from you. Now see here, Topper. Sit down, Skylar. I can roar just as loud as you. Topper. A little while ago, you said certain things to me. I demand an apology. Bravo, bravo! Here, here. Topper, I've never seen you like this. Apologize. Maybe my language was a bit strong, but... Apologize. There was nothing personal about it. I lost my temper. All right, Topper, I I'm sorry. Will you accept my apology? You did it, Topper. You won. No, I won't accept your apology. I quit. Quit. Quit? I'm retiring on $800,000. Good day, Mr. Scholar. $800,000. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Call in the bank examiners. I want the books audited right away. Yes, sir. <laughs> Could Topper B. He hasn't been home all day. He's probably out spending his eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh no, George, we've got to tell him the truth. It was your idea. You tell him. <laughs> oh, George. Uh oh. How could he buy those things? He didn't have the money. Get rid of a charge account. <laughs> 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 
Hello, George. Hello, Manny. What's with the bottle? Uh, gin, vanille. I'm going to make him a martini so big he'll be able to play water polo with the olives. <laughs> oh, uh, Topper. Uh, Topper, dear, there's, there's something we have to tell you. Oh, yeah, there's something she has to tell you. Oh, I'm plenty of time to talk on my new yacht. Yacht? You bought a yacht? Uh, not yet. But I stopped in to price them on the way down to the newspaper office. By the way, have you seen the evening paper? Look. What do you think of that? The editor's a friend of mine. When I told him the news, he had a photographer take my picture. I expect a lot of people would be seeing my picture soon. Yeah. Front and side view. With numbers underneath. And it won't be the numbers on the ticket either. Did you sleep well? Like a top. I was just lying there on the bed, thinking how rich I am. Henrietta won't take off a diamond necklace and furs. She slept in them last night. Uh, Topper, dear, take my hand. Hmm? Now hold on tight and listen to me. <laughs> oh, George, I can't go through with it. You can. Uh, pardon me. Hello? This is Cosmo Topper. Oh, you saw my picture in the papers. <laughs> Uh, what charity do you represent? Well, put me down for $5,000. Uh, no, Topper. No? No. Uh, well, well, whatever you say. Uh, make it $10,000. Uh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Uh, you're right, Madeline. What's the good of having money if you don't make people happy? <laughs> I'm going to spread mine around. Uh, you, uh, you both had something to tell me. Yes, Topper. You... I was. Well, you do. You, uh. You certainly look handsome in that robe. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Cosmo. Uh, coming, dear. You look perfectly lovely, my dear. But uh, aren't you a little uh, overdressed for breakfast? Uh, I just wanted to show the new dress. Cosmo, it was so clever of you to win whatever it was you won. Well, credit where credit is due, my dear. You should thank our friends, the ghosts. They're entirely responsible for our present situation. I feel sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hear what? Uh, Marion, she's not feeling well. I'm sorry, too. Oh, Cosmo, now you've got me talking to them. You know they only exist in your imagination. So you've been telling me, dear. I feel silly talking to people who don't exist, but... If it'll make you happy, Cosmo, I'll thank them. Where are they? Uh, well, I, I don't see them at the moment, and uh, they're about here somewhere. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, they have a dog. Did he have anything to do with it? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's go and have a bite of breakfast, shall we? You go ahead, Cosmo. I'll answer the door. Right, dear. Good morning, Mr. Topper. Mr. Scarlet, come in. My charming. <laughs> I suppose you've heard about our good fortune. Ah, yes. My wife and I read it in the paper last night. I do hope I can persuade him to withdraw his resignation from the bank. Did you hear that, George? He wants to give Topper his job back. Yeah. And Topper doesn't know how bad he needs it, too. We'd better be nice to Mr. Scala. And uh, let's go in and make him comfortable. Get him a chair, George. Hold up his feet. I'll get a footstool. Put a pillow behind his back. <clears throat> uh, oh, acid indigestion. Banker's stomach. <laughs> Cosmo? <laughs> Cosmo? Now look here, young man. I absolutely refuse to accept your resignation. We want you back at the bank. We need you. I'm going to propose your name for membership on the board of directors. Say yes. My answer is a flat, firm, unequivocal... Quick, George. Put your hand over his mouth. Don't let him say no. <laughs> Silence gives consent. Thank you, Topper. Now I'll rush right down to the bank and I'll have your office redecorated. 
how'd you like me to do that to you? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Cosmo Topper? Uh, yes. My name's Kitler. Uh, hi, happy to meet you. Why? You don't know who I am? Under my present financial circumstances, I'm happy to meet everyone. <laughs> I'm from the United States Bureau of Internal Revenue. Oh, I see what you mean. We have a very fast follow-up service. But I haven't even got my money yet. Ooh, that's all right, Mr. Topper. We'll wait at 6% interest. Now, just a few forms to fill out. Uh, how much does he come to? On everything over $300,000, the tax is 92%. 92? I add the state tax to that, and my income as a banker, there's nothing left. Well, that's why we organized the flying squad. But let's not look on the dark side. Maybe I can save you a dollar or two. How many dependents? Just my wife mm. and three ghosts. Well, we can't list them as dependents. Maybe I can give you something for depreciation on the house. Uh, for being haunted. Does Cosmo Topper live here? Yes. This Cosmo Topper? Yes. May I see him? I bought my wife a diamond necklace and some furs. I charged them. How am I going to pay for them? First things first. Right now, we have to figure out some way to keep you off relief rolls. Cosmo, there's a lady here to see you. Oh, not now, dear. Mr. Kittler here is helping me go bankrupt. Cosmo! My darling, my darling Cosmo! Oh, ma'am, please, please, oh. you're sending me. Cosmo, Cosmo, somebody you know, dear? I thought you were dead. Oh, but if you don't let go my windpipe, I will be. At last I found you, my long lost husband. What? Your husband? But he's my husband. Excuse me, Mr. Topper, I think I should point out that you can only get a deduction for one wife. Let, let, let's get this thing cleared up immediately. I've been married to Henrietta here for 25 years. If I'm married to her, how can I be married to you? Maybe on a business trip? When were you and Cosmo married? Twenty-six years ago. He was wiped out in the stock market crash of 1929. It affected his mind. Well, there's nothing wrong with my mind. Those ghosts. Well, as I say, he went out and never came back. Oh, I can't bear to think of it. But, uh, you poor thing. Cosmo, how could you hurt her like that? Henrietta, who are you going to believe, her or me? After all, you must admit her story is much more logical than yours. I mean, a dog who drinks martinis. Do you think I'd come here without proof? I'll show you my proof. She's a phony, I tell you. We gotta help her. In matters like this, he's a babe in the woods. Here are my jewels. <laughs> Still think Topper's an innocent babe? Yeah. They should have said out of the woods. Cosmo Topper <laughs> Jr. and Armsock. Armsock is Cosmo spelled backwards. Boys, this is your father. Cosmo, there is a family resemblance. Why don't you say something, Cosmo? Excuse me, Mr. Topper, but if I had a choice of wives right now, I'd take the one with two dependents. <laughs> I did not, you. No, sir, but when you get into the higher bracket, you've got to think of those things. Henrietta, here's my only legal, lawful, wedded wife. All right. Will you sign this, please? Cosmo, you don't remember me? I'm afraid you need some shock treatment. I won't see any doctor. I was referring to my lawyer. He'll give you a very good shock. Unless you make a reasonable settlement. You won't get any blackmail money out of me. All right. If you won't think of yourself, think of Henrietta. Think of what people will say about her. What will they say? Oh, no. Your wife writes a very fine hand, Mr. Topper. 
Uh, come in, dear. I was floating up the stairs like a balloon. Oh, naturally you were floating like a balloon, dear. You're lightheaded. Cosmo, I've seen you float, but it's never happened to me before. Well, that proves that you're my wife. It does? I float, you float, and that woman in there can't even get off the ground. Oh, Cosmo, we were so happy together until you won that money. Now everybody's trying to destroy our marriage. <laughs> You heard what Henrietta said. Well, she's right. I don't want to appear ungrateful, but ever since winning sweepstakes, I, I've had nothing but trouble. Uh, Topper, darling, would you like it if we fixed it so you, you didn't win? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's show them how we do it, huh? Oh, don't strain yourselves. <laughs> There. It's, uh, it's all taken care of. You didn't win. What do you mean, taken care of? The income tax man is still in there. And that woman who claims to be my wife. She puts on a performance like a well-rehearsed act. Well, I bet she's pulled this on lots of people. Let's have a look at her purse. Once you pulled this stunt on a man who inherited a brewery fortune. He paid you off. I've got a nuisance value. Not with me, you haven't. George, Marion, will you show them to the door? It'll be a pleasure. George, take this one by the seat of his pants and throw him out. I'm not going to ask you what's the trouble with these people. Sometimes I think I have eye trouble, but when I listen to your explanations, I know the troubles with my ears. Yeah, look at that newspaper. An apology to the readers. Hmm, it says that the report you won the sweepstakes was an error. See, Doctor, what did I tell you? Look. Here's a picture of the man who really won. Poor devil. What's his address? <laughs> oh, thanks for the floor show. Maybe I can catch you some other time. Goodbye, Mr. Topper. Oh, well, he was rather nice. I'm beginning to miss him already. That's the best news this paper ever published. Now maybe my wife will stop ding-donging at me. Uh, Mr. Schuyler, is my position of the bank still open? It certainly is, Topper. <laughs> I couldn't get my work done for wondering who was going to do yours. <laughs> Come on, we'll get down there and get busy. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Topper. Oh, Henrietta, look, I didn't win the sweepstakes. Not a dime. And by losing $800,000, I make a big profit. I really don't know what is going on. I'll explain. No, don't. I'm confused enough as it is. I just want things to be the way they were before we got that awful money. Our own little home and you floating around in it. Thank you, dear. Of course, uh, you understand the furs and the uh, necklace will have to go back. Oh, I don't mind. Really, I don't. We were much happier without them. <laughs> I don't believe in you. I know you aren't here, but if you are, I'd be much obliged if someday I could have another time and necklace. Why don't you go to bed, dear? Oh, I don't want to go to bed. I just want to sit up all night and enjoy being poor. <laughs> <laughs> A 
John W. Lufton, Bernard L. Schubert production. Produced by John W. Lufton. Starring Anne Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll.